What's up you guys, it's Ed back again from TechSource and this is the instructional video on how to build Orion, the $500 gaming PC that I built for the month of July. If you want to build yourself the best possible gaming PC for only 500 bucks, then you came to the right place. But be sure to check out the original video as well if you want to see benchmarks and gaming performance tests as well. Alright, so all you need to start building a PC is basically a Phillips screwdriver and a flat surface to work on. That way things don't roll off the table and get lost. Uh, by the way, for those of you that are working on carpet, make sure you are constantly touching the PC case. That way static doesn't build up in your body and end up damaging the components. Um, also be showing you how to install Windows 8.1 for free, so definitely thumbs up on that. But that's basically it, let's go ahead and start the build process. Alright, so the first step is to lay the PC down and move the cables aside. Next, you have to install the standoffs on the case, but if you want to know which holes to screw them in, you can bring your motherboard over the case for a few seconds while you determine which holes correspond with the motherboard. If you did everything correctly, you should have 6 standoffs installed in these exact same locations. Next up, you have to install the IO shield. Now, this is pretty easy, just make sure it's facing the correct way by holding it next to the motherboard for a second before you install it. Go ahead and place the I.O. shield in the cutout near the back of the case and apply some pressure to snap it in place. A good way to tell if it's completely in is by checking it from the outside and if all four corners are visible then it's all the way in. If it's not then the motherboard won't fit so that's another way to tell if you did not install it correctly. Next we are ready to install the CPU on the motherboard so go ahead and press down on the long metal piece and release it. Next you have to match the embedded triangle on the motherboard with the gold triangle on the processor. So once you figure that out, gently lay the CPU on the socket. Now make sure not to apply any pressure. If everything is correct, it should easily fall in place. Press down on the bar to lock the CPU in place, then we can move on to installing the CPU cooler. General rule before installing the cooler is to figure out how you want to route the wire to connect it to the motherboard. I personally want the absolute minimum cable slack so that the case doesn't have a bunch of wires hanging around, so this is the way I am installing the fan and I strongly recommend you to do it as well. Slowly bring the cooler towards the CPU and with one motion lower it completely down trying to match the brackets on the sides with the hooks on the motherboard. Do your best to try not to move the cooler once it's set on the CPU. Next up, attach the metal brackets to the hooks on the motherboard. Do the side without the lock first and then once you do that, go ahead and do the other side. Turn the handle all the way to the opposite side to lock the CPU cooler in place. Then you can proceed to connect the cooler to the motherboard via CPU fan connection. After all that, make sure that the cooler is tight and does not budge before moving on. Next, we are ready to install both RAM sticks. Match the gap on the RAM sticks to the notches on the motherboard before installing them. Slide in both sides at the same time while applying pressure equally with both hands until it snaps in place. You may have to apply a lot of pressure to make them snap in place, so don't worry if you do, you won't break them. Repeat the same step for the second RAM slot if you're installing two RAM sticks. Now we are ready to fit the motherboard inside the case. Grabbing the motherboard from the sides, gently lower it into the case and be careful not to hit anything with the motherboard as you can damage it. Once the motherboard is flat, you will need to align the standoffs from the case to the holes of the motherboard and also make sure that the IO shield perfectly aligns with the connections from the motherboard like this. Next up, we will need 6 of these silver screws along with 6 rubber gaskets. Obviously, the gasket goes around the screw and the screw gets inserted into the standoffs. You may need to move the motherboard slightly to align the holes while screwing them in, which is completely fine, but it's important that you guys don't over tighten the screws just yet. Just simply install them until it's comfortable. We will tighten them later. I normally install screws in a crisscross pattern. So after installing one on the top right corner, I would move to the bottom left corner and then the top left corner and so on and so forth. Once all six screws have been installed, you can now go through each one in a crisscross pattern once again and tighten them to where it's comfortable. Don't over tighten them as you can damage the motherboard. The best way I can say this is by tightening them using your fingers instead of your whole hand if that makes sense. So once all six screws have been somewhat tightened, it's time to install the power supply. So go ahead and look for a bag like this that came with the unit and take out the four tiny screws that you are going to need. 
Make sure to peel off the sticker in the center of the power supply before installing it. Also make sure that the fan is facing downward otherwise you will block the airflow and that can cause some serious problems. So with one hand holding the power supply up, use the other hand and install the screws. Now once again a crisscross pattern is recommended. Once you get two of the screws in, you can let go of the power supply and focus on putting in the other two screws. Once again don't tighten them until all of the four screws are inside. Next it's time to install the hard drive. Make sure that the exposed area is facing downwards and that the cable ports are facing outwards before you slide it in the bay. Now you can install it on the bottom bays as well but make sure you do that first before you install the motherboard because it kind of got in the way so I had no choice but to install them on the top which isn't a big deal. You will need two screws to mount the hard drive in place. They do come with the case so make sure you check your plastic bags and find them. You will need to install one screw on each side. You might need to fiddle around with the hard drive to make the hole appear but once it's visible like it is here then go ahead and install the screws. And then same thing goes for the opposite side. So this is basically what your PC is supposed to look like, a complete mess. So we're gonna take this time to connect the cables and do some wire management. First up is the 24 pin connector that's connected to the power supply. We need to plug this inside the motherboard and in case you ever get stuck, remember this simple rule. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't belong there. So find the only 24 pin female connector on the motherboard which is usually all the way on the right side and connect it. Now this is the hardest cable to connect since you do need a lot of pressure so don't be afraid to give it some force. You won't damage the motherboard unless you purposely come in contact with the components. Most of the time you won't hear it snap so just make sure that the hook is fully seated. Another useful tip while you are connecting all of these cables is to make sure that you are routing them in a way that they don't interfere with other cables. It will help with the cable management in the end. Next cable we are connecting is the blue USB 3.0. It's actually the only blue cable that comes out of the PC case itself so it's really hard to miss. This one connects to the blue port labeled USB 3.0. It's actually pretty self-explanatory. Make sure that the notch is facing down before you insert it in. Next two cables are the HD audio and the USB for the front panel. These go along the bottom of the motherboard. The USB connects to the port labeled JUSB1 which is to the right of the USB 3.0 and the HD audio cable connects to the port labeled JAUD1, which is to the left of the USB 3.0. The next set of cables are a little tricky. It's actually really easy once you learn it, but you have to check your manual to see which one of these connects to which pin. As you can see here, it's easily labeled for me. First off, they connect to the JFP1 connection, and illustrated above is the order that you have to connect them to. So locate the JFP1 connection on your motherboard which should be to the right of the USB 1 and connect the HD LED to the bottom left two pins. And right next to it connect the reset switch. After that connect the power switch right on top of the reset switch followed by the power LED negative and then the power LED positive. There is an extra pin sticking out on the bottom right which is fine. That's actually reserved. Next we have two cables labeled CPU and this is needed to power the CPU but you will only need one of these since the motherboard has only a 4 pin connector. You can find that on the top left of the motherboard right next to the exhaust fan and the power supply. It's really hard to miss. Next up you have to set up the hard drive so look for something like this that comes out of the power supply. It doesn't really matter which end you use, I did end up using the first one. So go ahead and find the back of the hard drive and go ahead and insert the cable to the far left side of the hard drive. Next you have to connect the SATA cable and it should be a black cable with white ends. If you're using a different motherboard, look at the manual and find out which ports are the fastest. In this case, ports 7 to 8 are the fastest and luckily the ports are color coded so it makes everyone's job a lot easier. Make sure to connect the SATA cable to the bottom connection instead of the top because it will interfere with the GPU. If you have extra hard drives to connect, just follow the same process and use one of the other ends from the same cable to connect to your second or even third hard drive. Also don't forget to install the SATA cables for each one of them as well. Next up, we are ready to install the graphics card but before we do, we need to remove these metal pieces near the back. Always install the GPU in the first PCIe slot for optimal performance, but we do need to remove the second and third pieces from the back. I accidentally removed the top one as well, but it's not a big deal if you do. Actually, before we install the GPU, let's go ahead and hook up the exhaust fan. It's actually right next to it and it's labeled System Fan 1. So this is what we have so far. Most of the cables and hardware are installed. 
The only thing left is the graphics card and the PCIe cables to power them up. Take this time to do some cable management, run the cables near the top and around the case away from the center of the case to clean things up. Zip ties all your friends so make sure to group up as many cables as you can together and just shove them to the side and away from view as much as you can. As you can see there is a huge difference than before. The case really limits the cable management so just do your best. Okay so now you're ready to fit the final piece into the puzzle, the graphics card. Just simply snap it into place and install both of the thumb screws. After that you need to connect both of the 6 pin PCIe cables into the GPU. Now don't worry about the extra 2 pin connector hanging loose, that's actually normal. So there you have it, a $500 gaming PC with all of the parts installed. The next step is to install Windows on it and I'm going to show you how to do that the free way. The first thing you're going to want to do is to get on another PC and open up the link listed in the description section down below. Once you are here you need to download the files labeled mount windows and windows 8.iso. Once both files are downloaded you will need a USB drive to mount the OS onto. So insert your USB into your PC and then run the windows download tool. Step 1 is to select the ISO file which you should have already downloaded from my Google Drive. And step 2 is choosing the media type, in this case we need to select the USB device because we want to mount the ISO on the USB stick. On step 3 you need to select the USB drive and then after that click on begin copying. This process usually takes around 10 to 20 minutes to complete and it will format the USB so make sure that you don't have anything important on them before continuing. Once it's complete the bar will turn green and you can go ahead and close the program. Open up your My Computer to double check the USB. If you did everything correctly, you should have these files installed inside, including the setup.exe file. Make sure Orion is hooked up to your monitor and that the keyboard and mouse are also connected. Next, go ahead and insert the USB device in the USB 2.0 slot on the left and not the USB 3.0 on the right, since it won't read from it just yet, and then go ahead and power on the PC. Once it starts the boot sequence, keep hitting the delete key on the keyboard so that we can access the BIOS. Once you are in the BIOS, navigate to the advanced BIOS features and hit enter. For the boot sequence, we need to switch the USB 3.0 to the top. So your boot sequence should match what I have on the screen here. If it's not, go ahead and change it. Once you are finished, hit the F10 key which will save the configuration and reboot the PC. While it's booting up, just sit back and wait for it to load Windows. As you can see, it did read the USB drive and it will bring you to the Windows setup screen. So just go ahead and go through the setup process and fill out all of the required information. Now once you get to the product activation window, you do need to type in the code that you see on the screen. I also left a link to the code in the description section down below as well. Once you enter the code and hit next and accept the license agreement, you will come to this page. Make sure to select custom install and select the hard drive you want Windows to be installed on. If you have only one, then it should already be selected by default. Once you click next, it will begin installing Windows. It should take you less than 30 minutes to complete the installation and at the end, the PC needs to be restarted. As soon as it restarts, remove the USB drive and hit the delete key to access the BIOS once again. Go back in the advanced BIOS features and select the boot sequence once again. And then over here, make sure that the Hitachi is set to the first boot device and Infinity is set to the second boot device and then hit F10 to save the changes and reboot once again. After it reboots, it will take you to the Windows screen and it will set everything up for you. It will most likely reboot a few times which is normal. Go through the entire setup process for Windows and once you are done with it, it will take you to the main page. Next step is to install the GPU driver and the start menu. I did leave a link to the website down below, just simply visit the site and download the graphics card drivers and install it. After that, you are ready to install the start menu. While this is optional and you don't have to install it if you don't want to, I strongly recommend it since it will make your life a lot easier. So go back to my Google Drive and download the Star Doc program and run it. It's already cracked so you do get a free copy of Start 8 and once you are finished installing, you now have a Windows Start menu. You are welcome. Anyways, that's it for the video. I hope this guide helped you guys on building a gaming PC and if it did, definitely let me know by leaving a like on the video. If you guys run into any problems or have any questions at all, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Also make sure you guys are following me on Twitter and Instagram for all these sneak peeks and behind the scenes for all my PC projects. I got an Ultimate Gaming PC coming up really soon and it's going to be really awesome. But anyways, thanks again for watching. This is Ed from TechSource. I will see you guys in the next video.